Has MJF signed a new contract with All Elite Wrestling? But first, the blockbuster AEW signing has been revealed. Heading into this weekend's Full Gear pay-per-view, AEW president Tony Khan would hype up the impending announcement of a blockbuster signing and fast forward to the show itself, where Tony Schiavone would be stood in the middle of the ring to introduce the latest addition to the All Elite roster, although there is a catch. As many had speculated heading into the show, current AEW GP United States Heavyweight Champion Will Ospreay would make his way to the ring to put pen to paper on an AEW contract, although he won't be linking up with the company just yet. Ospreay would note that before he becomes All Elite, he'll be finishing up with his current employer, New Japan Pro Wrestling, where he is still technically under contract. Heading into Full Gear, there would be some doubts as to if Will would be the signing due to his deal with NJPW not expiring till February, although there appears to have been an agreement made between the two promotions. According According to Fightful Select, Osprey had indicated to New Japan that he had no plans of sticking around and received their blessing to open up talks with AEW, something facilitated by the close working relationship between the two companies. Talks are said to have picked up considerably in early fall and AEW were optimistic about getting a deal signed. Fightful would add that Osprey will be able to stay in his home country of the United Kingdom as part of the deal, despite past claims that he was open to moving to the United States. The deal is said to have officially been signed the morning of the show and Will was kept away from the building until right before the full gear main card began in order to keep him away from everybody else in the company. Fightful would note that WWE had been in contact with Osprey in order to gauge interest, with inquiries being made over a possible schedule and a relocation to the States. This confirms several reports that claimed WWE had heavy interest in the star, although AEW managed to beat them to the punch. TNA Wrestling are also said to have interest, although there is no word on talk actually took place. Discussing why he chose to sign for AEW during the post-show media scrum, Will would note, I've built up trust and rapport with Tony. I feel them at my best over here. I've enjoyed every time I've come over here. Right now, this is the best decision for me and my family. I'm not interrupting my kids' school. My missus can see her parents. I get to be one of the best pro wrestlers that have ever done it. And I get to do it now on weekly TV. And I get to really test myself in these waters. I'm really looking forward to testing myself. And I'm thankful for New Japan and everything they've done for me. That doesn't mean I'm done. I can still, with Tony's blessing, I can still do some New Japan days it just has to be right. And next has this former WWE Champion signed for AEW. Another big debut that took place over the past couple of days went down at this past Friday's taping for Ring of Honor, which happened on the same night as the live AEW Collision tapings. On the show, former WWE and SmackDown Women's Champion Ronda Rousey would appear as Marina Shafir's tag team partner to take on Athena and Billy Starks, with this being a rematch of a wrestling revolver match the night before that ended via disqualification. As we discussed, in the video that highlighted the candidates for the Full Gear Mystery signing, Ronda recently debuted on the independent scene in the Los Angeles area, and we will discuss the possibility of the revolver finish that saw Athena lay out Rousey with the ROH Women's title, leading to an appearance on AEW or ROH television, something that happened on Friday night. As for the Rowdy One's future under the AEW ROH umbrella, Tony Khan would take to the Full Gear media scrum to discuss how the deal came together and if she's now signed to a contract, and he would note. She's not signed, but we had a great conversation. It came about, of course. There was some unfinished business. They had that match, and I thought it would be great for our fans to settle it in the ring. At the Wrestling Revolver show, they had the tag match, and to be honest, I had spoken to them, and I thought it would be great to have a match and build some interest, and then have the story come back to Ring of Honor, where Athena is the Ring of Honor Women's World Champion. Billy Starks is her minion. There is a lot of interest in that. Ronda was happy to come here, and she was great. The crowd was really excited to see her, and it was a great match. We'd love to have her back sometime. According to the Wrestling Observer, Ronda's appearance was a one-off deal and that the company are open to using her in the future if she wants to. It was also noted that Ronda did the appearance as a favour for her MMA training partner Marina Shafia, who was her tag team partner for the night and has been at every indie appearance thus far. 
And next, the Young Bucks are set to take time off from AEW. At the Full Gear pay-per-view this past weekend, the Young Bucks would find themselves on the losing side of a match with Chris Jericho and fellow Elite member Kenny Omega, losing their status as number one contenders for the AEW World Tag Team Championships in the process. After the match came to a close, Matt and Nick could be seen throwing a tantrum at ringside, a continuation of the character arc that's seen them playing into claims that they are childish, with them seemingly heading towards a heel turn once again. Shortly after the bout, elite stooge Brandon Cutler would take to X to reveal that the Bucks will now be taking time off from wrestling, and he would say, I'm being told that the young Bucks will be taking some time away from wrestling. People close to Matt and Nick's camp are asking for privacy during this time. Fightful Select have since provided an update on the situation, confirming that Cutler's claims is part of the ongoing storyline, and that the tweet is designed to further the angle, and they would write, the Young Bucks are poised for a heel turn if they haven't already undergone one in the eyes of many, but we're told that they won't be alone in that. In addition to the Young Bucks, there have been plans for them to be joined by others. Fightful has learned that Brandon Cutler is at least tentatively slated to continue with the Bucks, as well as at least one other personality as they continue their turn. Brandon would once again take to X earlier today to add yet another layer to the angle, with him confirming that the books are now finished on Being the Elite, a show that has recently been featuring Cutler and Colt Cabana as the lead, perhaps a sign that Colt will be the other personality. Whilst a recent AEW roster page change saw the Bucks' executive vice president titles removed from their profiles, Fightful were able to confirm that this was merely a mistake and that the titles have now been re-added. Next up, a huge WWE match has been confirmed. Elsewhere on Friday night, WWE would host the latest episode of SmackDown, a show that went head-to-head -head with the rescheduled AEW Collision, this due to a clash with the Full Gear pay-per-view on the Saturday night. On the blue brand, a major match would be confirmed for the upcoming Survivor Series events, one that will go down inside the War Games cage. The show would see Bianca Belair, Charlotte Flair and Shotzi looking for a fourth and final member of their team to take on the new Damage Control, which consists of Bailey, Asuka, Kairi Sane, and SmackDown Women's Champion Io Sky, with Dakota Kai still ruled out due to injury. After both Mia Yim and Zelina Vega were taken out by the heel faction after attempts to get them to join the babyface side, they would turn to multi-time women's champion Becky Lynch, with a brawl then ensuing between the two teams ahead of the weekend's huge Chicago event. The segment confirmed a prior report from Fightful Select that revealed the man was expected to be involved in the women's war games bout with us now awaiting the arrival of Randy Orton, who was reported to be involved in the men's side of things in the exact same story. Perhaps he could show up as early as tonight on Monday Night Raw, with WWE said to be planning to reintroduce him to television before Survivor Series itself to calm any expectations of a CM Punk appearance. And next up, has CM Punk's WWE return just been leaked? Speaking of a CM Punk appearance and attempts to dampen expectations as to his impending arrival, it seems somebody on the WWE UK team didn't get the memo as a recent addition to the official WWE Home Video UK store has spun the rumour mill right back into full spin. Earlier this week, the store in question would add a Christmas stocking that is filled with a number of goodies including DVDs, stickers, bags, and other miscellaneous items. Included in the list of various products includes a CM Punk sweatband and wristband package inscribed with the words CM Punk and Best in the World. Whilst it's important to note that these items are not new releases and are from his prior run in the company, this is seemingly the first time a WWE official store has sold CM Punk merchandise for a number of years, with all items being wiped following his 2014 departure from the company. Many have speculated that this is a sign of an upcoming return, perhaps at Survivor Series or Royal Rumble, and that somebody at WWE UK is about to be fired, although perhaps this is just leftover stock that the branch is looking to clear out. In any case, whoever made the decision to include the items had to know that this would set the internet alight, but now we'll simply have to wait and see if this is a sign of something or not, and as of this recording, the stocking is still available to purchase and hasn't been pulled after being live for several days at this point. Next up, has MJF signed a new contract with All Elite Wrestling? 
Throughout the past couple of years, current AEW World Champion MJF has hyped up his impending free agency and rival negotiations with both AEW and WWE once his contract expires at the end of 2023, labelling this the bidding war of 2024. Some have speculated that this claim is part of an ongoing storyline as to enhance his former heel persona, something we now have an update on via House of Wrestling. According to sources in WWE, the company have had no communication with MJF's camp and the belief is that his deal runs into 2027 rather than the end of 2023 and Nick Hausman would note. House of Wrestling has heard from several WWE sources who believe Friedman has quietly re-signed with AEW. One higher up WWE source stated that there have been zero talks between the two sides. They further noted that the idea Friedman is set to enter free agency imminently is a false narrative and that they believe he has re-signed into 2027. The report adds that one WWE source feels the ongoing contract saga is completely in his head storyline, with another stating that MJF has 1000% re-signed with AEW and he is under a long-term deal. Whilst we still await official confirmation on the contract status, we do know that in the short term, MJF will be out of action after suffering a hip injury during his recent AEW World title defense against Jay White at full gear, this according to Wrestle Purist. The plan is currently for the champ to remain on television while he heals up, although this will be in a non-wrestling capacity. And before you go, make sure you check out The Devil Unmasked, who is behind the mask in AEW.